Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Ed Weedholder, president and founder of Strength Fitness and Speed, main location in Pleasant Hills. And Strength Fitness and Speed does a lot of cool stuff. We've been talking today with Ed. Ed, let's go back, recap how you go about doing what you do, the sports you touch on. I've taken Alec, Brevin, and Carter. I've taken entire AAU teams because I can see the value. I know uh, Bethel Park High School uh, saw some tremendous amount. You had a testimonial from the coach in both football and basketball. Talk about how you do what you do and the impact it can make for young athletes. You know, Dave, it, when I started this business, it was all um, results, results-oriented. Let's take two-tenths off the 10-yard dash. Let's jump six inches higher. Let's stop and start. Let's make our pro shuttle go down. We can maybe translate this over to the field or the court. Um, what I learned was I became a mentor as well. Um, I've got kids coming back who I worked with in middle school, fifth and sixth grade, that are now back as college seniors. They've just never stopped coming. So the hidden, <laughs> the hidden benefit of this job is in the fact it's ultra rewarding. Uh, a hidden benefit is just me being able to watch these kids not only get better at sports, but go out and have more confidence in life. Looking to me for guidance at times, that was something that was uh, quite hidden. And I, I hope I didn't skirt your question there, but um, I wanted to add that in there. That's great stuff. I was so focused on the technique and the results and the outcomes that that has been the greatest uh you know, the greatest reward of, the, of being in the company, involved with the company. And like I've said multiple times, I've seen it firsthand on that mentoring side and the relationship side. They do see you and Jake and others with your team uh, as really more than just someone training them. I want to talk a little bit about results specifically because I want to make sure you can uh, – tell the whole Strength, and Fitness, and Speed story about how it can help build that foundation, but it also can help specific sports. So I, I have uh, three sons. Uh, I'm very blessed. They're healthy, uh, socially strong kids, but all three are somewhat athletic. So we brought them to you, uh, and they all three have different passions about it, and as a result, the results are different. And I will say deliberate practice is, <laughs> you know, I can go in reverse order, but you know, I'll get in trouble from my wife for that. But uh, So... Alec, for example, my oldest son, you worked on him with his 40. He was very football driven. He played basketball, but he was more of a natural football player. You you and Jake did some work with him. And I remember his 40 time getting uh, progressively coming down lower. But from the one six month period from like a 4.8 down to a 4.63, I think. Mm -hmm. So just talk about when someone wants to specialize like that. Sure. Uh, in the 40 yard dash, Dave, the most trainable part is the first 10 yards. Once we get out past that 40 yard mark, it becomes more about inheritance from mom and dad. So um, if we have someone for eight, 12 weeks and we're zooming in, um, we'll attack that immediately. So that could be something as simple as tweaking their, their uh, first step. It could be something as simple as that initial knee punch. And we're talking about saving you know, tenths of a second in just that first 10 That's yards. what you did with Alec. It's exactly it what you did with Alec. First ten. His, his first part was awkward. And our question is always like, how am I 40 going to get better? We're only running 10 yards here. And I always say, trust me, just focus on it, trust it. So that's one example. So now with my son, it was just purely to play high school football. He did well, had great experience for Seton LaSalle. They won a ton of games, lost only really one team in his junior and senior year. It happened to be the same team four times. <laughs> uh, South Fay had a phenomenal program. But when you're talking about someone beyond that, mm -hmm. someone who's going to play, um, and Alec could have played collegiately had he wanted to at a Division three level, but let's go to some of the guys you've had that were playing for Pitt and other places, and then they end up going into the combine. Talk about how significant something like that can be. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you've got a guy that's maybe thought of as like a 4-7 you know, guy, but he wants to be playing the secondary on a football team, um, the, it's the bubble guy. It's not the blue chip first round pick guy that really needs the work. It's these guys that need to get a foot in the camp. Uh, a tenth of a second in a 40 yard dash, uh, three more inches on a vertical leap might just be enough to get their foot 
in the door. Um, and you've had some NFL guys talk about those guys. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, one of the most, one of the nicest young men, uh, aside from the world of sports, Dom DeSico Jr. My goodness gracious. Uh, despite being obviously somewhat gifted, I wouldn't say he's extremely gifted, but he's gifted. That's a very, you know, a good athlete. Uh, he worked and man, did he work and man, did he buy into what I had to say and, uh, thought the world of what I did for him. Um, and it paid off for him. He, uh, he pretty much willed his way into the NFL. I mean, he, uh, as soon as he got his opportunity, I think it was initially with the bears. Uh Um, you know, he'd come back and see me in the off seasons for tune-ups. He, uh, he embodies what a true athlete, an athlete that you'd want your sons to look up to. Um, but it comes down to, he had a need to achieve. And uh, that's a, that's always been a buzzword with me. He, uh, he wasn't going to be stopped. Talk about some of the baseball players, both position players and pitchers. How does that work? Sure. Um, if we've, if we've got a pitcher in the house, um, they always want to, they want us to like, you know, beat their internal rotator cuff up. They want us, and I say, guys, you do this when the weather gets warm, you're doing this 200, 250 times a day. Um, with pitchers, we try to work on their shock absorption. So they wonder why they're doing things to improve their, you know, their scapula muscles. They say, guys, those are your shock absorbers. You're going to go out and you're going to beat your rotator cuff up already. We're looking to make sure you have smart rotator function and we're looking for your shock absorbers to work. So it doesn't go to your elbow or your shoulder. We need that force to dissipate across your back. So we'll work, you know, scapula, we'll work serratus muscles and work a lot of core. We explain to these guys that, you know, if you strengthen those muscles below your belly button, you're going to throw harder. And they're like, what are you talking about? The guys, trust me, you know, your core is your anchor. So our pitchers get a lot of, um, like, you know, core involvement, smart core training, uh, baseball positionally. It's kind of fun. Uh, our middle infielders get a lot of, uh, lateral movement work, a nice quick open or a nice quick crossover step. Um, and you know, to the 40 yard dash to football is as the 60 yard dash is to baseball. So for showcases and things of that nature, baseball guys, run 60 yards, you know, in a straight line, which I don't quite get, but that is a benchmark test for a lot of baseball players to get to the next level. So that'll be always part of, you know, it, with every sport, not to, not to digress, but every sport, there's a combine list of tests they need to be good at. And there's field specific things they need to get good at. We always, in our training, we always discuss that with them. So guys here, we're going to get better for your showcase workout number two, let's work on your actual, you know, on the field or on the court type of athleticism. We're talking with Ed Wheatholder, president and founder of Strength, Fitness, and Speed here on the No BS Marketing Show. He's been talking about some things that I think we have to touch on. The common thread throughout all of this is you've been mentioning communication, but you've even touched on leadership. And the way you've done it is you've said how you and your team, like your son Jake and other trainers, have become mentors, leaders, to the people you're training, but also the communication techniques you're using to get them to understand why you're training their shock absorber muscle (laughs) and putting kids from different schools together. So talk more about that leadership and communication, because that's what this show is really about too. Sure thing, Dave. Um, From a uh, a communication standpoint, um, I go back to my father again, God rest him. He, uh, He was a bartender. My father had the biggest set of ears you could imagine. I don't mean physically. I just mean you'd meet the guy for a half hour and you'd tell him your life story. That was just, he was very empathic. He would just listen and, you know, he'd put in his two cents here and there. But, um, I feel like the lost art is listening. So if we have, uh, you know, parents and their son or daughter come in, you know, early on, we got to listen. They're looking for something, whether it's uh, more playing time, whether it's, uh, you know, they want to get a division one scholarship and we've got to listen and we've got to make sure that we know what, where their mindset is. That definitely impacts our training and it impacts our dynamic. Um, I think listening is a, is very much a lost art. Um, 
you know, and on the leadership end, uh, it it's been it's been great for me to you had referred to Coach Jake earlier. It's been great for me to see my son emerge in that category. Now we've got some you know, some younger athletes coming in, and uh, you know, every now and then I'll get a, a phone call or an email and. and say the, the boy or, uh, or daughter has been working with me, I'll get an email and they're, you know, uh, Ed, I, I hope you're not offended by this, but you think we could get a little Jake time? My son thinks he's really cool and he, he wants to work with him. And that's music to my ears, you know? Hey, so he's learning. How about Carter? How about Carter? <laughs> Carter and Jake, man. Yeah, peas in a pod. <laughs> they are peas in a pod. Carter's my youngest. He's 12. He's taken most to the strength, fitness, and speed, and he's worked mostly with Jake. Yeah. Couldn't be happier. It's not just guys. I want to make sure we talk about that. It's it's uh, females, young women uh, that are coming there because I've seen them working there. Talk about that because I want to make sure the audience gets the uh, whole glimpse of strength, fitness, and speed. Absolutely. Um, just this past off season, Dave, I also go off site and I actually train three separate girls softball teams. Um, here's here's the difference between, and you know this, between training boys and girls. I was blown away by how well the girls listened to me. Fundamentally sound. <laughs> spoiled. No bad habits. <laughs> spoiled rotten. Uh, so yes, we train lots of female athletes. And, you know, training. They take you literally. Yes. I've done camps <laughs> and I'll actually go, I got to watch what I say. They're doing exactly <laughs> what I say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, when it comes to messaging, we have to understand both our why or reason for being and our customer's why or reason for buying. We then need to crystallize that into one big idea, one memorable message or theme that makes an emotional impact on our target audiences. So whether it's for you personally or your company, and I hope you go with the company and the hot tub and <laughs> how, when you came up with it, but what's your big idea? You know, Dave, early on in I might actually have been thinking about this in the hot tub as part of the whole deal, but, and, and this is nothing new. Um, but when you're to me, when I'm working early on with an athlete or I want to sell an athlete or sell the parents on, Hey, we don't want to do an eight week program with you. We want to help you through the whole, your whole athletic career. And so I'm sitting there thinking it's not necessarily selling like, two more inches of jump. It's not necessarily selling, you know, two tenths off of this, two tenths off of that. You're selling a feeling like the feeling a kid might get or a young adult might get when they've gone from like ninth man in the rotation to sixth man. And suddenly the next year I'm starting this year, you know? So to me, that was kind of like a moment for me. Like we're not really selling it's physical, but we're selling like emotion. We're selling feelings of absolutely. It changes the outlook of a person when they succeed at anything and they start building milestones. And particularly in sports, you can see when players are getting that self-esteem. And that as a coach is something that really drives me. And I, I've seen it drive you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Number one comment we get, and this this just makes us feel great, whether or not, you know, we're three weeks in, we haven't really improved physically yet, but comments we get, play stronger is probably the most common thing we hear. Oh, he or she's playing stronger, already playing stronger. That's mental. We haven't really done a whole lot physically yet, so I couldn't agree more. The mental aspect so so uh, significant. I know having coached high school, then coaching uh, school, middle school, coaching Metro travel basketball and coaching AAU. Some coaches uh, and players just do not click. And it could be the kid. It could be the coach. It could be the style. You see the mental aspect and they, they become downtrodden and you need to rebuild that self-esteem and build them back up. Absolutely. I mean, I always get to be the good guy. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not saying you're not going to play this game or you're going to get 30 seconds at the end of a game. I get to be the good guy. So I get the big ears on, I listen, and I say, hey, you know, we've got to turn this around. You've got to knock coaches' socks off with how you play, whether it's in practice, whether it's 
being the first back, first guy back from getting a drink or first girl back from getting a drink, listening extra hard, sticking around, practicing when practice is over, we're going to help you. You know, we, uh, we'll listen. We're going to help you. That's Ed Weedholder, the president and founder of Strength, Fitness, and Speed here on the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Ed, pick a tool or tip you'd offer that helps our audience tell their story, craft their message, or communicate to internal and external audiences. It could be a tool like Google Trends to generate content ideas, something that I use. It could be your favorite book, blog, or productivity resource, or a tip on how to approach their career, whatever you think might help our listeners. Dave, there's uh, there's actually I'm a reader. I learn by reading. I uh, I'm not a uh, I don't learn by listening a lot. I'm, I'm more of a reader. Um, obviously, your literature is uh, and no butt kissing involved here, Dave. But your stuff is really really good. It's been really helpful. Thank I like you. how you draw parallels between like a pop culture thing, like a chunk of a song or a a movie, and you relate it, and it just draws you right in. Thank you. And you learn. Um, a couple other books that have helped me out. Uh, the E-Myth series. Mm -hmm. uh, I love them. It taught me to look, to step out of my business and look at it. Just that concept. And I also enjoyed a lot of Malcolm Gladwell books. Mm -hmm. um, three types of people who I kind of looked at as three types of customers. And, uh, you know, those, those sources right there are, you know, that's my big three. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, mentors, Mm -hmm. who do you consider, you've mentioned your, your dad a mm -hmm. number of times, so I'm going to assume him, but in the workplace, mm -hmm. have you had a couple of mentors that you'd like to give a shout out to and talk about how they made an impact on you? I, I'm a big uh, Ancestry.com guy. I, I've looked back at my family's history. Uh, my biggest influence is far and away my mother, toughest human being I ever, ever met, uh, battled and beat cancer four times. Wow. Finally got to her a couple of years ago. Um, you know, that and it's, I got a shout out to her immediately. My family is a series of entrepreneurs looking back, huh. uh, coming over from France, uh, coming over from Ireland. Um, when I was younger, my grandfather, uh, Canis Coudrier owned a, and the store still exists on the corner of Beltsuver and Climax, right up the hill from route 51 there. He, uh, he started that store back in the forties and, uh, he worked, that guy worked sun up, sun down. His life was that store with my grandmother. And what was the store? Uh, it's called Ken's. Okay. It's still called Ken's. Uh, to me, I thought that was just so cool. You're your own boss. You, you get to set the, you get to set the tone here. You get to open when you want, you get to close when you want, you make the decisions. So that definitely as a young kid. Uh, my grandfather passed in 77, so from the time I was as young as I can remember, four or five years of age, up through like 10 and 11, I watched him. And I thought, it would be nice to be your own boss. That definitely powerful influence there. Good stuff. Ed, it's now time to keep calm and hit the bullseye. All right. I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. Tell me which one you like more, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit the bullseye. So I give you the two. You pick and then just give me your rationale why. Okay. Geico's Gecko or the Aflac Duck? Aflac Duck. Because I know Aflac is the company. Uh-huh. Uh, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't know the Gecko's Geico. I don't remember that. I remember the duck and it's Aflac. Reach out and touch someone or can you hear me now? Reach out and touch someone. He goes way back. It's the melody. Reach out, reach out, and touch some. I know that one. Yeah. Nice. Just say hi. Yeah. I'll keep my day job. Progressive flow or Jake from State Farm? Jake from State Farm. I love the khakis. Okay. It sticks with me. You're not a flow fan? I'm not. I don't know why. I'm not sure. So we're not going to get Flo to come work out at Strength Fitness and Speed. She probably will never come. Jake might, you know. Jake might work. <laughs> he might work hard. We'd like to come back with some more pop culture. Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery or Ace Ventura Pet Detective? Ace Ventura Pet Detective. He's just a flexible guy, man. He's athletic. He's out there running with the beasts. Ace Ventura. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 
Here's the one he'll spend the most time on. We have had the chance in our lifetimes to see probably a half dozen ridiculously special athletes. And I'm going to pick two and you tell me which one's a better athlete and why, but you can spend time on both. Bo Jackson or Dion Primetime Sanders? <laughs> Bo Jackson. Uh, obviously, both played multiple sports, right? Bo Jackson was flat out dominant at both. Um, Bo Jackson was the fastest big man that I have ever seen. The guy's retired now. He's shooting a bow and arrow with his feet, for crying out loud. I think there's just pretty much nothing that he can't do. I mean, it, it's Bo. Bo knows. From a messaging standpoint, both are great too, but we'll go into the messaging in a second. So I'm going to agree with you because the Bo Jackson stories and the things that you saw breaking the bat and just the mild long home runs and running over Bosworth. But because I have to be uh, the contrarian, I'm going to make the case for Deion Sanders. I see. So you said dominant. Bo was dominant in both. Deion was the premier cornerback, shutdown corner, that basically won two teams their Super Bowl because he was the difference maker in the teams that had not won it the previous year, he came and then won it. Hall of Famer, first ballot, incredible, possibly the most electrifying return person of all time. Absolutely. Played in the World Series, played for some really good baseball teams and contributed at a high level and dresses really good. <laughs> he didn't like to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, 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 I agree that I agree with Bo. So let's take the messaging. So on the messaging standpoint, a couple of quick things. The Bo Knows campaign, let's talk about it from when we're in our 20s, so it's mm -hmm. our peak time of out partying and peak time of pop culture. It was so prevalent. I'll say. I can still hear, I can still see the commercial right now in my mind's eye. It was a fantastic campaign. Even pulled in Bo Diddley. Yeah, Bo Diddley. Bo knows Diddley. Yep. You don't know Bo or Bo doesn't know or whatever. <laughs> then my favorite Dion one is whenever he's with uh, uh, Jerry Jones and they said um, two, 10 million or 15 million. He says both, but he actually says both. <laughs> and to this day, I laugh because they couldn't retake that. He went both. <laughs> It's a Pizza Hut commercial. It's a very good campaign. I actually wrote uh, a light reading tide around that. You talk about the pop culture. So this episode's sights and sounds of marketing, I know you're excited about this one. Suzanne's going to laugh at me the whole time. It starts with the song No Scrubs <laughs> by TLC from 1999. <laughs> Suzanne's, Suzanne is, is, uh, is laughing. So I'm going to read this in a very formal way and oh it's going to make it funny. 1999. A scrub is a guy that thinks he's fly and is also known as a buster. Yeah, those people are unfortunately a dime a dozen. Their lack of self-awareness results in an inflated view of their strengths and blind spots when it comes to their weaknesses. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke ass. Ah, the wannabe. <laughs> it's easy to say you want something. Just about everyone dreamed of doing something big. The reality is most people sit on the sidelines when it comes time to put themselves out there. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. Suzanne's <laughs> dancing it over here. Big talk, little results. Why? Pick your reason. Fear of failure, lack of desire, unwillingness to commit to doing the work, to doing deliberate practice, as Jeff Colvin and his book talked about and I did in the rant today. You've heard it before because it's true. Success comes from setting goals, building plans, and making the commitment to improve. But a scrub is checking me, but his game is kind of weak. Yes, there are the fakers, people that confuse activity with productivity, and Ed talked about this earlier. It's more than just putting the time in. It's the deliberate practice, repeatedly doing the specific tasks necessary to improve in areas where you can build a competitive advantage, and that's why it applies to business, sports, life. And I know that he cannot approach me because I'm looking like class, and he's looking like trash. 
When you've made the commitment, done the deliberate practice, worked your plan and believe in yourself, you're ready to win or lose with class. One of my coaching phrases, win with class, lose with class. No one wins all the time and losing still stinks, but we regret losses more when we weren't prepared, which results in nervousness or lack of confidence. As a coach, I tell all of my teams, I can remember the times I was nervous and lost over the course of my lifetime as a player and a coach. You don't want to be nervous and nervous comes from lack of preparation. No scrub, no scrub, no, no, no scrub, no, 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 no scrub, no, no, no. Yes, you actually do decide whether you are one or not. Ed, your thoughts on no scrubs? I hope I'm not. I, uh, <laughs> other than that being my one of my wife's favorite songs from the late 90s. Um, Dave, I like how you read that. That's <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> I like it. You got to get the old white guy version. I, it's great, no, man. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, you hit on something in the middle of that, Dave, and it... Uh, nervousness comes from lack of preparation man that i love i love that you pulled that out of there and i really really to draw a basketball parallel i felt like there were times where i could almost fall asleep on the bench because we already did our now we're just going to execute we're prepared Mm -hmm. we're not nervous we're cool Mm -hmm. same thing with my business like over time i've become i'm still intense but i feel like i've become more relaxed about it. I can mm-hmm. enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. I might keep it another year. You know, I might be able to stay around. You know, I don't take it, any of that for granted. I always feel like this could go away. Yes. It keeps me on my toes. However, I feel more prepared and I feel like I'm enjoying it more. The nervousness has decreased over time as I learn from guys like yourself. Um, that's what I got from Scrubs. You're not a scrub. I don't feel like a scrub. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) Other sights and sounds of the year 1999 include, is that your final answer? Regis Philbin on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Love that show. Loved it. Regis is still around too. It was amazing. It was everything. It it was talked about Mm -hmm. constantly, used into pop culture, like you'd be in a meeting and not know something and say, can I use a lifeline? (laughs) The next one, the Blair Witch Project earned $248 million and only cost about $25,000 to make. That's a nice profit margin. Yeah. I think we could, I think we could live with that. Scary movie too. That was a good movie. I liked it. Really good movie. Suzanne never saw it. I liked it a lot. She was, that was her heroin era, 1999. <laughs> <laughs> she, she wasn't up on any of them. <laughs> I missed 99. She missed all of 1999. Her and Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers were under the bridge. <laughs> the first Chuck E. Cheese opens. Didn't like those ball bins, Dave. I- <laughs> there's various things floating around. Yeah, there. there's like a lot of danger there. There's <laughs> yeah. germs. There's potential for problems. Chuck E. Cheese is a part of uh, adulthood that's uh, that's that's kind of strange. Yes. When you go to Chuck E. Cheese, it's loud. It's uh, crazy. Mm-hmm. The food's bad. <laughs> Suzanne loves their pe- the heroin era. <laughs> Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos, whose vision of a giant internet bookstore helped pioneer the global online shopping revolution. He was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 1999, and people often forget that that's what Amazon.com was at the beginning. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. It was all about books. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, I'm a big book person, so I loved it, but I thought this is just small time. I mean, it's only for a small little niche group, books. Wow. He's a visionary, Absolutely. man of the year. In sports, Ricky Williams put on a wedding dress. <laughs> Brandy Chastain ripped off her jersey. And Ed started strength, fitness, and speed. What a great year. So let's talk about all three of those. Ricky Williams, you remember him putting on the wedding dress on the cover of ESPN, the magazine? I do. And I, I can't remember what the context was there. I, uh, I'm going to use it. Ricky being Ricky. 
Ah, uh, there you go. He was crazy. He was and his then, own man. Yes. <laughs> Did you ever see the documentary on him, Run, Ricky, Run? <laughs> Parts of it. It's a lot of weed being smoked. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. Brandy Chastain ripped off her jersey. Suzanne's a big fan. She just shrugged. <laughs> See, because she doesn't remember 1999. Brandy was, Chastain ripped was, off the jersey. I wonder why she did rip it off. What, what do you think? The, she got a lot of girls interested in soccer. And, you know, a lot of boys started watching too, I'm sure, at, at that yes. point in time. But, yeah. And in 1999, you started Strength, Fitness, and Speed. I did. I remember my first clients. Uh, crazy story. I was leaving my old workplace. It was my first two clients. Somehow, this is a true story. It sounds too far-fetched, but we were uh, helping someone who was, as they call, crashing. We had to get our machine set up quickly. And as a result, we were exposed to uh, something that was contagious. And as, as a result, we had to stick around and take some medicine, and we had to sit by ourselves for about an hour. Well, I've got an appointment waiting for me, and... I had a, enough time now after that hour. I needed every bit of my 30 minutes to get to my clients. This was when my facility was at my house. And sprint out of the hospital, sprint to my car. It's pouring down rain. Get out of the parking lot, just flying. My windshield wipers break. True story. So now. Which car? Because you're a sports was, car This guy. was my old Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. Now my head's out the window. It's raining so hard, it's stinging my face. But I'm going like a bat out of hell to get to my first two clients. <laughs> Made it with a minute to spare. Dried off a little bit and was ready to rock. But when they got there, they said, oh, were you already working out? I said, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was soaking wet from the rain. <laughs> that was my first two clients. Great story about the start of Strength, Fitness, and Speed in 1999. This episode, Sights and Sounds of Marketing. Ed, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? Is there a LinkedIn place to go, website, email? Sure. Um, the website is uh, strengthfitnessandspeed.com. And on there, they have a could see a contact email. It links up to all of my social media, my Twitter page, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, my blog, all through the website. And, um, you know, the old school phone works too. That's on the website as well. Great. Ed, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Dave. Had a blast. And for our listeners, thanks for joining us for the No Bullshit Marketing Podcast. Visit BoldSolutionsNoBS.com for show notes, plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Are you signed up for light reading? As Ed mentioned earlier, and I appreciate the plug, you'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.